there's so much confusion, so many different diets, and you don't know what to believe, paleo, keto, carnivore, I don't know, the China diet. And the only thing all of those diets have in common, well, actually, they have two things in common. One is that likely they don't work because you can't stick to them. And two, they're all trying to put you in a calorie deficit either by taking away a macronutrient or a group of foods or tricking you into eating less somehow. And that's just not sustainable. 25 all-time world records. 25. Steffi Cohen is one of the great athletes of our time. And I know that sounds hyperbolic, but did I mention the 25 world records she's got? After spending three of her teenage years on the Venezuelan national soccer team, Steffi Cohen went on to win a state gold medal in Olympic weightlifting before focusing on powerlifting. And among her many, many accomplishments, which includes being a doctor of physical therapy, by the way, she holds the all-time world records in the 114-pound weight class for a squat of 202.5 kilos, a deadlift of 205 kilos, and a total of 510 kilos. And just saying that is definitely going to date this video because Steffi regularly annihilates her own world records, so those numbers are likely to change in the future. She's also the co-owner with her fiance of Hybrid Performance Method, which is a coaching company that helps their clients to achieve their aesthetic and athletic goals. With the stated goal of the company being to help you to look like a bodybuilder, lift like a powerlifter, and move like a weightlifter. You know, like a, like a hybrid athlete. And it's with this method that Steffi manages to achieve a phenomenal physique while also being superhumanly strong, which is something you don't normally see. So I talked to her about her diet. We're gonna go into the way that Steffi approaches nutrition, the way her company approaches nutrition, and the struggles that she finds people encounter along the way to achieve their goals. So you can have some actionable takeaways for yourself. So we're gonna start pretty basic, then get a little bit deeper. So let's go with calories. What are our calories? I'm five feet flat, and currently I weigh about 130 pounds. I've never measured my, my body fat percentage, but I'm pretty lean right now. I would guess like 11, 12%. So right now I'm cutting, uh, so I, I'm consuming and, and I'm not training to get stronger, like I'm just messing around playing sports, doing tons of cardio. Uh, so I would say my calorie intake right now is about 800 cal 1800 calories. Uh, when I'm in a strength cycle or a strength phase, probably bump it up to like 2500. I gain some weight, maybe, maybe between 5 and 10 pounds. And her daily macros? I'm about 130 grams of protein, about 180 grams of carbs and about 50 to 60 grams of fat. So that's about a gram of protein per pound of body weight, which is pretty standard actually for most athletes who are looking to have as much muscle and as little body fat as possible. Within reasonable limits, of course, she's not literally an elite bodybuilder, but for most disciplines, like whatever your sport is, whatever kind of lifting you do, a gram of protein per pound of body weight, it's pretty standard. When she's trying to gain weight, most of those extra calories are gonna come from carbohydrates, some from fat, but she doesn't cycle her carbohydrates and her calories throughout the week based on whether or not she works out. That's called carbohydrate cycling. A lot of athletes do that. They have the extra calories, extra carbs to give them extra energy and extra kind of, you know, stimulus for muscle growth on days they work out. But Steffi doesn't do that and a lot of other people don't do that either. And the reason Steffi doesn't is because she has a really, really good idea of how much energy her body requires on average. She doesn't feel a need to toggle it throughout the week. So what makes up those protein calories and carbohydrate calories and fat calories? Well, you're in luck because she eats the same thing pretty much every day. Here we go. So for breakfast, I ha usually have uh, eggs, chicken thighs, bacon. I have like a high, I have a high fat breakfast, and I try to avoid carbs in the morning. Maybe like a cup of orange juice at most, just because I I don't know. I feel like I can think better when I'm not pumped up with carbs. So that's breakfast. Then usually a big lunch, either ground beef or steak or chicken breast, and rice or sweet potatoes and some vegetables. Then I usually have a snack. Greek yogurt with fruit is my go-to. Maybe a tablespoon of almond butter or peanut butter. And then dinner, usually the same as lunch. Either steak, ground beef, or chicken with rice or sweet potatoes and some veggie. I munch on popcorn pretty much all day long. If I'm feeling like antsy or, you know, just, uh, just bored, want to eat something, uh, I buy the, the pop popcorn. It's amazing. Like for three cups, like three grams of fat, 10 carbs, and three protein for three cups. But what's more interesting than plain popcorn is the fact that Steffi actually has a beer with dinner every night. Something that many folks, including many athletes, say should never touch your lips if you want to perform well. People are like, why? You can, you can drink and still be lean? And yeah, the answer is yeah. You know, if you fit it into your, to your calories in the day, yeah, you can. Obviously, I, w I would never advise that 
someone adds like three or four drinks a day, because I guess that's not good for you. But yeah, you can fit in a glass of wine or a, or a, or a or a can of beer a day. Still, if that meal plan sounds a little dry, you'll be happy to know that she has junk food pretty much every night、uh, when she says her willpower is low. She says throughout the day her willpower slowly decreases, and around bedtime she's more likely to eat some junk food. And she can if she fits it into her calories because calories and macronutrients are pretty much all there is to body composition. Sometimes I order a McFlurry. Sometimes I order an ice cream cone, or I have some Oreos with milk. Who knows? It gets wild sometimes. In fact, Steffi is perfectly happy for her clients and for herself to have some junk food if it fits into your calories and macros, especially around a workout, which is a time when it's not a terrible idea to have a bunch of sugar to help you power through a workout and really get your glycogen stores full. It can help your performance if you eat it at the right time. You know, you can have a can of regular Coke. I don't know, half an hour before you train, get 40 grams of sugar straight to the dome, ready to go. All right, so we covered calories, macros, meal timing, staple foods. Steffi also tries to avoid really high fiber foods because, by her own admission, she doesn't have much of an appetite. If she's a whole lot of fiber, she's going to find it a little bit difficult to fit in all the calories throughout the day because fiber is so filling. Which is one reason why it's great for weight loss, but not quite so good when you're trying to get in a reasonably high number of calories, like to support an athletic lifestyle, at least in some cases. So to that end, she eats low FODMAP fruits and veggies a lot of the time. Not all the time. She doesn't have any banned foods, but she tends to focus on like spinach, tomatoes. Mushrooms, orange juice, and she also really likes to have、uh, plenty of probiotics in her diet. So she gets fermented foods like kefir and kimchi, because getting plenty of probiotic bacteria in your diet helps to support your gut microbiome. That's the term for the trillions of bacteria living in your digestive tract that help you to break down and absorb foods more effectively. So there's a pretty strong argument out there to be made when you're getting more probiotic bacteria, you're getting more out of the food that you eat. What about the non-food she eats though? Let's talk about supplements. I mean, mainly protein powder, multivitamin, omega three stuff for like brain function, L theanine. That's about it. Vitamin D. L theanine is a really interesting supplement that isn't super popular for some reason. There's a lot of really compelling evidence supporting its use. It's an amino acid found in the tea plant, and it appears to promote relaxation without a sedative effect. So a lot of folks like Steffi take it to help with focus, and it also may help to reduce stress and anxiety. Without making you really sleepy, which is something that a lot of medications for this purpose, and also a lot of like nutrients for this purpose, like magnesium, tend to produce. So Steffi takes hers with caffeine, which is actually not unusual. It might sound counterintuitive to have the relaxation nutrient with caffeine, but what it seems to do is help to reduce the jittery, unfocused feeling that can accompany a hit of caffeine. Most folks have 50 to 250 milligrams of theanine in a day. If you've never had it before. It's wise to start with a smaller amount, and it's even wiser to talk to your doctor before making any changes to your nutrition or supplement regimen. Because I would never advise you to take a supplement without talking to a professional first. So that's what Steffi Cohen eats. But a question I wanted Steffi to answer is how she coaches clients to help them eat like this. Because for the average person, calories and macros and numbers it sounds really impossible to do and a really insurmountable obstacle. Even if they really want to have a body like Steffi's, so I spoke to her about this, and her answer: you kind of just have to be okay with doing some boring counting, at least for a little while. People love diet videos. You know, people that are going to watch this video are probably going to be like, "Oh, you know, what does Steffi Cohen eat? I'm going to eat the same thing she eats to look like she does." Because I'm, I'm guilty of that, you know. And it's the most difficult thing because it requires you to actually work and be consistent and track, which is boring. And it's repetitive and it's mundane, but it's absolutely the, like the only way out is you need to you need to understand what your body's energy requirements are. And a lot of people get get stuck here because they're like, okay, I either need a coach to to help me figure it out, or I need a, a magic calculator. Truth is, it's gonna be wildly inaccurate because、uh, you know no one is the 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 Sherlock Holmes of. Of, of energy, you know, like you, you don't just don't know. It's it's all a guess. The place where everyone needs to start is、uh, tracking their weight every day for at least a month and tracking their intake. And that way, you can see, okay, you know, am I losing weight, maintaining, or gaining weight at this current energy intake? She emphasizes that people typically underestimate their calorie intake by a good fifty percent. 
When Steffi starts working with clients on this, they're always amazed at how much extra fat they're eating throughout the day without noticing it. In fact, of course, has more than twice the amount of calories per gram than protein or carbohydrate. So a little bit of extra fat can go a really long way. And another reason why it's a really good idea to track your calories and your weight for a little while is because people have varying amounts of calories they burn throughout the day, not just from exercise, but very importantly, also from NEAT, N-E-A-T, which stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. Some people are wired to like fidget and it, it seems silly. And honestly, I didn't believe it at the, when I first learned about it, that some people fidget and move around more and that's why they're, they're burning significantly more calories until I started purposefully trying to move more throughout the day, like through counting my steps and just like, you know, just trying to move more, standing up more, moving around, walking more. The difference it makes is huge. I think it, I forget what the exact percentage is, but I believe it's like 30% of, of your, the calories that you burn come from non-exercise are related thermogenesis. And that's crazy, right? Like those are things that you have control over. So be boring and track everything you eat for a month. But by then you should have developed a skill or enough of a skill that you'll be able to do a better job of estimating the amount of food you eat without necessarily always requiring a scale for every single thing you eat. This is an ongoing process, of course, but one thing that everyone who talks about this agrees on is that the more you do it, the more it becomes a skill and the more second nature it becomes. So it becomes a little bit easier when you just put in a bit of hard work at the beginning. And it gets to a point where you've tracked so much and you and you just know the, you know your body so well and what you need based on all the time that you spent tracking that you can easily estimate every single meal and, and know, oh, I've probably had, I probably had too much for lunch. I should dial back my dinner. Like I can't have my usual dinner because, you know, I had a really fatty steak for lunch. You know, you start, you start learning how to, how to manage your, your intake just because it, it becomes second nature eventually. Steffi also really, really emphasizes the importance of building an environment that's conducive to your goals, which is something a lot of influential people in the space don't talk about that much, but it's really, really crucial. Like you, you cannot overstate the importance of having an environment conducive to your goals. So for example, like, okay, don't buy foods you're likely to binge on that are really high in calories. If you do though, which you can do, like, you know, she says it's okay to have junk food now and then, but a good idea is to like put it on a really high shelf. If you do somewhere you need to get like a chair to get it, that's gonna keep you from getting it just on instinct, right? And what you wanna do instead is put lower calorie, highly palatable, uh, more filling foods like at eye level in your pantry or in your fridge, so you're more likely to get them. It might sound a little bit silly, but humans are creatures of instinct and habit, and we do a lot of things, including eating and selecting our foods, without really thinking about it. So building these sorts of like roadblocks into your, uh, into your household, into your kitchen, can really go a very long way. Another one is substitution. So a lot of people don't like to take out stuff from their diet. If you substitute it, it can be a lot easier. So for example, like uh, substituting a 400 calorie meal bar or protein bar with something like fruit and yogurt, that's gonna save you about like one or 200 calories. Or you can substitute like uh, turkey bacon for regular bacon. That's gonna save you about 18 grams of fat. Just making better choices throughout the day and seeing how that impacts your, your weight is a great place to start. It's also not a bad idea to hire a coach as well. Now, this is not an ad for high performance method. It doesn't have to be one of their coaches. This is not a sponsored video or anything like that. Rather, it's important to remember that everyone has different struggles and roadblocks on the road to success. So in the diet space, that could be emotional eating, could be binge eating, could be under eating. Everyone's a little bit different. And so it can be useful to have an actual person helping you through these struggles, helping you overcome these obstacles easier that way than to like just look at a couple of numbers on a screen and say all right these are the calories i'm going to eat and then not really understand how to overcome the problems or understand why you aren't achieving those goals it's not the same for everybody but for a lot of people coaching can be a little bit useful that said there's no time like the present to start working toward your goals be it weight loss muscle gain avoiding sugar the most important thing is to know what your goal is write it down then start taking the steps toward achieving it and that's everything from us and everything from Steffi Cohen as well. I really want to thank Dr. Steffi Cohen of 25 all-time world records for coming on the channel today. Uh, you can check out our website below and our Instagram is on the screen right here. And uh, make sure you subscribe here as well because we've got a whole lot more fitness and nutrition content coming up.